Hello, welcome to the encouraging word of today. Today is Tuesday. It is July 23rd, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging word of God. And as we do, picking up in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, once again, we're going to be picking up now in uh, verse uh, 7 and, uh, and carrying on in this discussion about marriage and how it ought to be seen in a true biblical light uh, and the reality uh, of its importance. And so, uh, verse 7. Verse 7 says, For I would that all men were even as myself. This means single. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. So he says there, there are some who's been given the gift of celibacy, those who, who uh, do not need a partner uh, to be fulfilled in life. But there are those who can control themselves. And, and so therefore God has given this glorious relationship called marriage that allows us to express ourselves in that manner uh, uh, without being... Um, under his judgment and when we do it outside of the issue of marriage we are under his judgment in fornication and so he's given this relationship for us to be able to experience in the in the blessing of of uh, of marriage and so he says i would that all men though were even as myself but every man hath this proper gift of god after one after this man and another after that i say therefore to the unmarried and to the widows it is good for them to abide even as i am and so he says if you can, if you don't have to be married, don't be married. But you can devote yourself wholly to the Lord. Um, but, but if they cannot contain, if they cannot uh, control themselves uh, physically, he says, let them marry. This is important, for it is better to marry than to burn. That's how serious sex outside of marriage is. And God says this institution, this union, is very important to Him. And we must hold it in a manner that is consistent with his character and his nature. And, and that is that it would be a home that would be a loving and caring relationship between a man and a woman from, from uh, till death do them part or until Christ calls them into glory. Uh, but, uh, but outside of that, then if you, if you don't want to be married, then abstain. Don't be fornicating because you remember what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 uh, and verse 9 says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. All sexual in nature. It's all fornication. It's all sex outside of marriage, no matter what kind it is. And God says, stay away from it or marry to, to be able to supplant that. Because if you don't, you're going to burn. That's the reality. You shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you don't inherit the kingdom of heaven, where are you headed? You're headed to an eternal destination of hell, separated from God in an eternal lake of fire that burns forever and ever and ever. He says, please don't go there. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. This is very serious. Once we tithe that knot, we are to see it through it at all means possible. Um, and so, verse, verse, verse 11. Verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not put him away. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. He says, if you are two people unequally yoked together, it's going to be very difficult to remain in that house uh, without constant war and conflict going on in your life, which is why he tells us very plain and clearly, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. But a lot of times people get saved in a marriage that, and neither one of them were believers when they got saved. Or when they got married, I mean. And then they, they come to faith, and then the other believing uh, husband or wife uh, doesn't want to dwell. Because notice what he says here, uh, verse 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? And so he says, the reality is, is that you, in this marriage relationship, in this um, union that you have come to know, you have a great power over your other spouse to hopefully bring them to salvation. But if we turn them out, they are left to their own demise, and, and it's probably going to continue to be uh, in unbelief. And we certainly know where that leads, and it's not good. And Peter also gave this advice. 
So it's not just Paul speaking this truth. It's also Peter speaking this truth. If you, if you got 1 Peter chapter 3, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, if they're not believers, if they're not living by the truth, he says, they may also be one without the word uh, by the conduct and conversation of their wives. And so Peter agreeing with Paul here that there's a great power in marriage and and if you have an unbelieving spouse and you're married already, do everything you can to stay in that relationship because you may be the tool by which God uses to bring them to faith. But he also does understand that there may come a time where it's an absolute impossibility and the unbeliever says, I am done, I am gone, I am out, and there's nothing that you can do about it. But notice what he says. He says uh, they are not bound by this. He says, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. He says, I realize that we'll never come to peace. This is why we ought to see marriage from God's perspective and our, not ours. Um, why we should wait and pray and prepare for God to join us together with someone who would believe. Marriage is not from man, it is from God. And God has set the parameters for it. He's given us the blessing over it. And if we do it right, It'll be the closest thing to heaven on earth. If we do it wrong, it'll be the closest thing to hell on earth. And that's why he says, hey, listen, if you if if you don't do this right, there ain't going to be no peace. But God called us to peace. And, uh, and so, verse 17, But as God hath distributed to every man, and as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all the churches. And so he says, at the end of the day, you are going to have to, to make these decisions in the truth of what you know to be right, before God and not between yourselves because God is watching. God is taking an account. And one day we're going to stand before God and uh, we're going to have to give an account on, on those issues of how we live this life and how we dealt with our marriages and how we live. Um, as he said, do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? Uh, and, uh, and so I pray today this is encouraging us to think rightly about marriage. Maybe helps us also to help share this with others who are in marriages, uh, that we would stay faithful uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and foremost, and then we'd stay faithful to the ones we have vowed before God to love. And so go forth today mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be encouraged.